Welcome back to the garage guys. On today's video we're going to be cleaning up the pan and getting it ready for all the wonderful things we're going to be doing to it after today. Today we're going to be taking the pan out doing a lot of cleanup. I got some welding to do on the actual pan, some modifications as well to shock mounts and things of that nature as well as I want to seal up and then undercoat the the pan both top and bottom so that it's ready for whatever I had decided to do next. Now you'll notice that I already have a lot of stuff done to this pan. Now if you've been following along this build you notice the very first video that I ever uploaded was the video of me fitting a bus transmission into the bug pan. To do this, it doesn't just bolt in. You have to get a kit and some other things. Some people can make their own kits. God bless them, I wasn't that adventurous. So I just got the 10 degree bus transmount kit. My very first video is a very detailed how I installed that kit and the 091 six rib bus trans into the bug pants. All the same, you'll notice that a lot of fab work has been done to the back half of the pan, being the frame horns and things of that nature. So if you'd like to see that fab work, go ahead and go back to that first video and it'll detail everything I did, why I did it, and how it turned out. But as for today, we're going to be just pulling out the bug pan, doing some modifications to the shock towers and things of that nature, welding everything up, sealing everything up, and then painting, and basically getting everything ready for the next step. And with that, let's get started. Hey everybody, just wanted to give you a quick heads up what I'm doing. Just recently I was able to take care of my seat bases, that means take them out. I'm not going to be using stock seats, I'm going to be putting some suspension seats. I'm going to be using the Corbo Baja XP. But anyway, in order to do that, uh, just make it cleaner on the whole pan. I'm decided to take out the uh, sliders for the pans that I got. So here I wanted to show you what I did. Just uh, I'm the first time I ever used a uh, drill bit to take out pinch butt welds, but I just wanted to show you what I did there. All right, so literally just cut with a small bit and then a larger bit wherever I saw all the way around and then I pried it up with a uh, with a uh, claw hammer you know for taking out nails and stuff I just hammered it underneath and uh, there's a couple places I broke through uh, and I'm gonna weld those up most likely uh, but now I can totally wire wheel this up and uh, finish welding this as I as you guys know I need to finish welding this uh, this pan in or these floors into this pan and then we'll start working on the front end but yeah I yeah, just wanted to give a quick update Just cutting off the old shock towers at this point now the shock towers and the rearmost body mounts are integrated together in the same casting so i'm just cutting the shock mount out i'm leaving the body mount completely intact so i can still bolt my body onto the pan It's all about wire wheeling the uh, pan and get it ready for paint. I even flipped up the pan to wire wheel the underside of the torture bar as well. When I realized that keeping the stock trailing arm was only uh, getting in the way, I started taking them off. I will say that the driver's side trailing arm was very difficult to remove. So I sprayed it down with some WD-40 and tackled the passenger side while it soaked it. The passenger side was much more cooperative. The driver's side, it was moving, uh, but still very tight. So I went and grabbed a, a, some 2x4 uh, metal box tube and uh, used that as a 3-foot breaker bar and what do you know, it worked. Is 
anyone need some stock trailing arms? Time to tape up sensitive areas like threads. Some acetone to clean off any grime left behind. And then some self-etching primer. All the corners where the new floors and the old pan come together, I'm welding those completely, every corner. And I'm doing two inch welds. Then I flipped the pan up and welded the bottom two. Charlie had done a great job spot welding the floors in, but I wanted to get some stitch welds in there. After cleaning up the seams, I threw some two inch beads every foot or so. While working on the trailing arms, I noticed that the stock inner mounts of the trailing arms wasn't gusseted that much. I went ahead and made some templates, gusseting them to farther back on the torsion tube. I'm sure this is overkill, but it makes me feel better. Yes, that's me hammering down the gussets, forming them to the torsion tube. It's archaic, but it worked. With all the welding done on the bottom side, I used a wire brush to clean up the welds. Rubbed everything down with some acetone. Then I went to the auto parts store and picked up some 3M seam sealer. I'm putting down thick beads, then forcing the sealer into the crevices between the old and new floors. I gave the seam sealer a day or two to dry and then hosed the entire bottom of the pan with acid etch primer. While the clear sealer doesn't look like it filled the gaps, after the paint was on it, you can see that the gaps were properly filled. After that, it was time for some undercoating. I did a quick dusting at first and then threw on a couple heavy coats. After allowing a couple days for the undercoating to completely dry and harden up, I applied a layer or two of some standard semi-gloss Rust-Oleum over the top. Shiny. After another couple days allowing the paint to harden up, it was time to flip the pan over and start on the top side. First, and I know I'm gonna get a little bit of flack here, but I removed the stock e-brake handle. In order not to cause myself any extra work, I held the grinder as level as possible so that the, I only cut into the metal connected to the e-brake, not the pan. Then I pretty much hammered and wiggled the thing off. All I did was I grinded along that back edge there. I got the spot welds off. Then I had to break these two pieces. I ground that one and broke that one as you just saw. Looks like holding the grinder or the cutoff wheel flat worked because it didn't eat into the pan very much at all. A little scrub brush and some vacuum cleaning up the top path before we put some paint down.
Here we are just putting on some seam sealer on the top side, filling up the crevices left when the floors were replaced. One thing I like about this uh, beige seam sealer is you could really tell that once I put that bead down, I could push that entire first bead into the gap between the new floor and the old Now that e-brake handle is taken care of and everything's cleaned up, it's time to finish undercoating the top side of the bay. All right, after a day or so of dry time, you kind of see the uh, end result of the uh, seam sealer going in. Like I said, that is like of me pushing it in and trying to get it in between this piece and then the floor, the original floor that was underneath it. And the guy who put it in, Charles, did a great job. I've actually sealed up the top and the bottom. So there ain't no water getting in there. And then after that, I throw a bunch of undercoat on it, even up up top. And uh, the reason why I do that is just, just to Keep it clean, man. But look at the way this thing came out. This is I'm really kind of happy about. It. Man, look at that. It's a pretty decent finish to it. I don't know what happened here though. What was up with that? See that drip? Well, anyway, it's not a paint booth, but you can see, I've got it nice and clean. Very cool. Now the next part is that. Yeah, I'm gonna take some of the art paper. I'm going to cut out the pieces for it and then my little small ones and I'll use my magnet and just weld them in completely, top them off. But anyway, so that's what it looks like right now. Uh, I got half of it done and half of it undercoated. Now why did I not undercoat the other half? Because I have to do a bunch of welding which means I'm going to be sitting over there. So <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work for me until that's done. All right. fresh layer of paint and undercoating was put down. It's time to tuck this thing away for a couple days to let it harden up. Well, that's all I have for this build, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. Thanks for watching. I'm Damien. This is the Binder Builder. I'll see you guys on the next one.